Moving picture frames are holding on to my heart Who's pointing and laughing at me saying can't you see it's on you Turning my adversity into something so small Ain't always easy but baby you've helped me Wandering with people, things picking on my brain. You see my guilty face, but it don't replace the truth. Writing all the numbers down, crying it to the bone. They question and who, what, where, but it don't compare to you. You got me sitting on my head. So I just want to scatter. Goes through my hands, steals my body home. Caressing me like the wound can't help but swoon on you. Right or wrong, we move along. Courage changes the time. The way I shine my light, it cuts my right through. Bottoms up, beer nation. It's the beer mongers. A Columbus, Ohio's live streaming podcast about craft beer, breweries, alternative sports, and of course, shenanigans worldwide that's right for the brewery by the fans we are everything beer nation i'm spartan biscuit and my co-host the queen of quench squiz wow show number three right here oh man huge huge show here on everything beer nation and like i said we are the beer mongers and it is november 26 2018 sister what's going down not How you much, doing? man. Not much. Not much at all. I can't believe it's November 26th already. I know. I know you... that's like a cliche thing to say, but it, it really is true. Uh, had a heck of a weekend. I know you did too. Oh, yeah. And here we are back in the studio. Oh, yeah. Back in the studio. And it's just going to be us today. Uh, all you uh, monger maniacs out there, you know, uh, we, we, we got to go ahead and uh, we, we packed a fun one together. Uh, yeah, yeah. We've got, obviously, we've got, we've got beer news today. Uh, we've got, uh, we're going to be talking uh, about the Barley Hopsters, uh Speedy Beer That Moves, an actual special edition uh, to that, to that. Um, and, uh, you know, we've got a... We've got our new, uh, we've done it before and we decided that we're going to bring it back and uh, just infuse it. Yes, a new Just segment. infuse it! Woo! And that's right. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and just infuse it. That's right. So you definitely want to stick around for later on in the show to see what beer is getting infused with what. Yes. That yes. sounds like fun, Squiz. Second half of the show, so be sure to, be sure to stick around and see. Um, we're just gonna go kind of mad scientist with this segment. So, the first one with the Oreos and the Bison worked out all right. Oh yeah, worked out all right. This one, this one could be a little hit or miss. But if you know, the more we do these, I, I plan on really branching out and trying some really, really weird stuff. So yeah, good thing it's good beer that we're infusing. Yeah, it's good you know? beer we're infusing. So, so. Uh, I'll tell you what. Uh, obviously, this was uh, this was Bourbon County Week. Uh, you know, Black Friday, the drop, and. Uh, you know, uh, there was a couple places in my neck of the woods that we could get it. And uh, I know up at Barley Hopsters, they sold out, I believe, in like 11 minutes. Uh, Did you guys have a line? Uh, there, was, there was a line waiting outside uh, before opening. But, you know, uh, I, do have, uh, I do have connections in town. And there you go. I'm hanging out with uh, my dude, Ginty, hey, over there at the Opa. Man, yeah. The myth. Yeah, Ganty. and uh, he actually has uh, Bourbon County bottles right now at his restaurant, and bam, uh, at his bourbon bar. And let me tell you, uh, flexing a heavy, heavy bourbon bar, uh, one of the best that uh, in size and selection I've ever seen. And uh, uh, hospitality is awesome as well. What's up, What's up, Simpson? What's up, Steve? Craig Simpson from Pines Templars and Steve McIntyre from Springfield Beer Geeks. 
are watching today. Springfield Beer Geeks had a big day over there in, in their neck of the woods. They that, they brewed their they brewed the Beer Geek Deepa ooh. up at uh, Mother Stewart's today. So nice. Yeah, I know. Nice. I would like to try some of that. Super boot Joey McGee, the guy that has no idea what a leg workout is. He is uh, watching as well. What's up, boot camp? And uh, like I was saying, uh, it was uh, it was uh, it was a weekend night. And uh, I was just like, you know, who would, who possibly would have this uh, this Bourbon County right now besides barley hopsters that is all sold out? You know, I I went to, I went to social media a little bit, and uh, I got a little lead that uh, uh, Genty over there at Opa, and you know what? You know, I wouldn't have guessed Genty because I don't think I don't associate that with beer in my mind. But I mean, I guess bourbon I do associate it with, so I probably should have I probably should have realized. But uh, but yeah, uh, it looked like you had a nice you got a nice run of trying all of them really. Well, I I, I have uh, I got a chance to have the vanilla, and uh, me and me and Ginty were jo- uh, enjoying the the orange uh, variants right there. Which wow, look at here, this right here. This is one of the ones that you can purchase over oh, there hey, uh, look at that. over at the and Opa you can, you in can downtown see it right Delaware, here. Ohio. In your picture, yeah, I've heard good things about this one. So I figured we'd go ahead, go ahead, sister, go ahead and pour it up. You know, Do you have a glass? Oh, absolutely. It's around here somewhere. Now, you know, the you know, tell me what you're drinking uh, and how's it taste. But I want to know what's going out there in the uh, Bourbon County land. Uh, is there still a lot out there? Uh, is there uh, throughout the show? Uh, feel free to go ahead and throw your jabs in there uh, where you where you saw it last, and uh, if you know where is any of that, because uh, we want to go and help help everybody get the beer that they want to get. And uh, let's be honest, right now this is uh, you know this is one of the hot ones. All right, now. Uh, like I said, we're going to be getting into uh, uh, a lot of the uh, discussion uh, later on with the uh, the, uh, the bottle shop Speedy Beer that moves. All right, that is going to be a huge one as well. So I I've gotten the, I got uh, I've had the 2018. I've had the uh, the 2018 vanilla. I've had the 2018 orange, and uh, you know what? I've I've got a little treat for later on in the show. But All it's, right. def- it's definitely not 2018. Uh, I um, I tried the just plain old regular 2018 on Friday on draft. So I haven't had the orange one yet. But, um, you know, I'm about to try it right now. So. Bottoms up. Bottoms up. Cheers. All right. There it is. Wow, the orange really comes through on that. I got film on the side. Almost gives it like a, a sherbet taste. Yeah, definite creamy. Oh yeah. Yeah, really. Yeah, one of those. Really and, good. Mm 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 mm. Yeah. Now, uh, now, obviously, Squiz, I got into a lot of Bourbon County this weekend. You were uh, you were out of town. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, you you did you got a lot going on here too. Um, tell me about the order of the drunken turkey. I missed that part. Oh wow. Now uh, the order of the drunken turkey uh, is an event that is. Uh, it's held uh, in the evening up at uh, Barley Hopsters. Uh, it started four years ago. It was a. It, it was just like four or five people, six people at the most, and uh, uh, it, it was just nobody really had a whole lot to do that in the evening time. You know, uh, if you weren't napping uh, or 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 watching football, you know, well, you could do them all right there to order a drunken turkey. And uh, four years fast forward. Uh, it, it's pandemonium. The place goes packed. Everybody brings a dish, pies, food, casseroles. Um, and, and it's, uh, it's just a super, super, super cool time. Uh, Dom Fisher's kind of taking it over if I'm not mistaken, right? Yes, he is. Uh, he is now the new sheriff in town, uh, AKA the young custodian. So, uh, Speaking we. Speaking of which. Yes. Let's, let's give young custodian a plug. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. So. Here at uh, Everything Fan Chat Nation, new show starting next week, December 6th at noon. I believe that is Thursday. And that is going to feature our buddy Dom, young custodian, and his cousin Kyle Kraft. The, yeah, the Kyle, yeah. Yeah, that's going to be rad. Those guys have quite the personality on them, and they know so much about wrestling. So tune in right here at Everything Fan Chat Nation. 
check them out. It's gonna be it's gonna be awesome. You will not be disappointed. You will be entertained. That's so. for sure. All I I just hope that the producer doesn't have to take the chops too, because you know how they like that those two cousins like to uh, chop each other. You know, I don't think the producer's gonna have to take chops. No chops. No. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. He gets bourbon barrels and then he gets chops on. Yeah. Their stuff. <laughs> yeah no kidding. All right. So uh, we're going to be getting into we, we've got a beer nation badass as well. We're going to be getting into, you know, and, and nothing too crazy, but uh, could be a, a little taster of, uh, you know, what uh, uh, the young custodian in the cow could be getting into as well. But uh, so talk to me. Talk to me about uh, up north, Squiz. Would you get into up north? Anything crazy? You know, you know, I did. Yeah. Heck yeah. yeah. Um, drank a drank a. Well, I went to the I went to the uh, sip can release Wednesday. The somewhere in particular brewing can release picked up some of their new rice double IPA, which Ooh. was whew, it's really tasty. Um, we housed it all on Thanksgiving. Um, we got to get those guys on the show. That place is really awesome. Uh, and then Thursday, the last Thanksgiving with fifty five of my closest family members. No friends, all family. It was awesome. Um, I think by the end of the night, we drank. Count, I can't even count the amount of beers we drank. We polished off as a family, I think, t- six to ten bottles of wine, a couple, three bottles of scotch, um, I, vodka, bourbon. It was just insane. And plus, my dad made four turkeys. I think he clocked in at like 65 pounds of turkey. 65 pounds of turkey. Yeah, 20 pounds of potatoes. And then I was like, oh, hey, I'll make 72 deviled eggs because why not? No. Oh, gosh. If I ever decide to make 72 deviled eggs again, please just kill me. It was bad. Like, I, it took me two out. Peeling the eggs was really the, the like, bitchy thing was peeling the eggs. But, uh, you know, they turned out very well. Um, and then we had, so we had that. And then Friday I went to a place in Sandusky, Ohio called, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, small city tap house. And that is right there in downtown Sandusky on Columbus street across from the state theater. And, and let me tell you, woo, this place, best curated tap list I've ever seen in my entire life. No joke. Um, there's no hyperbole there. 75 beers, places like JAFB, Willoughby, custom make beers for Ka, who's the owner at Small City Tap House. So you go there and there's beers you can't get anywhere else, literally. That's just on tap. That's where I had the Bourbon County. Uh, I met I met one of my online beer friends that I'd never met before, Donna. What's up, Donna? It's great to meet you. And drank a bunch of awesome beer. I drank a couple of the... Uh, the exclusive ones, uh, JAFB made a, a exclusive IPA for him called Just Another Folk King IPA. Like, fa, like, you know, the soup fa, sp- but it's spelled pho, but it's fa. Just Another Fa King IPA. Uh, that one was pretty good. I had the Willoughby Cause Porter that was pretty pretty good as well. It's, I mean, it's hard to, when you sit down in there, you can't taste them all. First of all, because there's 75 of them, you know? And even if you did say a taster of all of them... It would take forever. You would be in the bag. I would love to know if somebody has ever done it because it was just, it was amazing. The space is amazing. I had the sliced beef pho. That was awesome. That's where I basically spent my entire Friday, essentially. And then we went to, we went to get pizza and I was drinking. They had pints of Bodhi at this pizza joint. I got there. I was like, oh, you're going to regret this. Won like four things on the skill crane. None of the children in the party were impressed at all with my skill crane skills. My husband was, so that was pretty cool. And then, of course, Saturday, the game. Oh, yeah. I'm sure you watched that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The Ohio State University. Yeah. Michigan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nobody really thought that was going to go the way it went. You know, uh, big OH out there to everybody, especially Dude, I'll be my honest. friends down south. I didn't think it was going to go that way. I was sitting there with my brother's watching it i'm like dude we were watching before where everybody was picking michigan and my brothers are relentlessly optimistic and i just looked at him i said there's no there's no way ohio state is walking out of this game especially after that game in maryland man so i don't i don't know yeah that uh that, that was a lot of points that was just not being stopped that's for sure and then 
the whole uh like are they gonna go to now it begins the debate are they going to the playoff or not i mean i'm sure I know uh, here's AP the debate poll. here's my debate is Central Florida going to be kept out if they go yes. undefeated? Yes, they are. For two years in a row. Yes, they are. Yep. Absolutely, they are. Yeah, let's let's put another SEC team in there. That's what we should do, right? Yeah, it's right. TV. It's right. A let's t- do that. But yeah, hey, can we throw a Mountain West in there? It's a TV show, yeah. man. Yeah. I so. Get it. Well, I'll yeah. tell you right now. I, I'd like to see Central Florida at least get a shot at it if they go undefeated for two years. What do you think about that? Eh, I don't disagree with you myself, but I don't think they're going to be a huge television draw. So, well, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, uh, yeah, well, I, I get it. I get it. You know, I, I'm not going to sit here and talk sports. I'll tell no. you, what, we got a, we got a lot. No, no, no. We, we got a, we got a lot. We got, uh, you know, we, we, we've got people that do that every single day right here on the network. You definitely check those shows out. But uh, what I want to talk about, all right, is the Beer Nation badass. All right. Let's move into the Beer Nation badass. All right. Because uh, this is a badass we pick every week that uh, eh, I just, you know, we think. It's a badass. All right, look at this guy. What is that? Is that a is that a wiffle ball bat? Oh no, that's a light tube. That's right. That's a oh, light you tube. Oh, you you with your light tubes? Yeah, I I wanted to give a shout out. That's just a little taster. This one's for the Kyle and the young custodian with their new show coming in on December sixth, so at noon. So uh, hey, I'll tell you right now, uh, I've never been turned on to 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 wrestling and cool stuff like that. So that for I don't know if that guy is even old enough to 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 have a drink, but hey, he he's definitely the uh, he he's the beer nation badass for the day would you take a light bulb absolutely absolutely i'll tell you right now all you out there i'll take a light bulb i'll take a light bulb let's go ahead what let, should we yeah who i'll wants, take a light tube if you want me to hit a light tube over a Woot's barn biscuits head yeah all right give us a shout out on those uh those comments also what's your where you're at what are you doing and what you're drinking most importantly um uh, and, and talk to me a little bit about the Bourbon County. If you see it out and about on the street, uh, at your bottle shop, at your Kroger's, or or in this case, at Opa's uh, at Tavern Opa's. and Grill in downtown Delaware, Ohio, Travis, short north of and north. Uh, All right. So, uh, yeah. Guess, he, guess he's watching right now. He wants to know what the barrels in the back are. I bet you he does want to know what those barrels in the uh, back are so he can get his hands on them. Yeah. You know? And then Simpson made a comment about Berardi's. And I'm, I, uh, hey, Simpson, Berardi's is my jam. Uh, some of my friends worked there in high school. I've been going there since I was wee, wee last. Some of my very first memories of being in a restaurant are at Berardi's. I'm glad you know what Berardi's is. I didn't visit this time, but I do make it a point to go there. When I'm up there sometimes. We're talking about Not light tube, time. Simpson. Do you want to see a light tube get busted over my head for crying Gendy out loud? Gendy says he has neons. Gendy, yeah. you want to do uh, it? There's the oh, there it is. Yeah. Does anybody want to see me take one of these? A well, young custodian will have the honor to do so. Honestly, look. Yeah, that guy's he is a badass. And he's got... Looks he, like he's at work at Staples. Yeah, he did this out back on his lunch break, I think. You know, he's got a nice uh, uh, chin strap as well. I wonder if he got any of that glass in there. Dude, that guy's not even wearing an undershirt with his polo right there. Hmm. Yeah. Honestly, I, I could probably take a couple. I'm, I'd like to do outdo this guy uh, and do two. All right? Maybe one by the Kyle and the other one by the young custodian. But I know how those two guys are. They'll get pissed off because they'll want to take a light bulb too. They might sh- smash one on each other's chest. Who knows? But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I really don't want to take a light tube, but hey, honestly, it's on the bucket list as long as someone's recording it. Squiz, you want to take a light tube too? Sure. Yeah. No, yeah, I don't. Right. I'll take one over my back, and I've done it over my leg before, but uh, never, not in my, not in my head. Nah, got a lot going on up here. I don't want to. All right, what what we're what we're drinking right wanna. now. As well is the uh, is the Bourbon County. Uh, it's the 2018. Uh, it's stout aged in bourbon barrels uh, with orange peels and uh, cocoa nibs that were added. This is the 2018 uh, version right here. Um, this is the first year that I've actually uh, got my hands on any of the variances myself. Uh, as I just get got into uh, 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 barrel aged beer uh, within the last couple of years. 
So, yeah, it's uh, my first time having a variant too. And and definitely as the as as it warms up a little bit, uh, the orange peel is is coming out uh, a lot stronger in it as well. I think. Yeah. Well, that's that's any stout you know you have warms up to room temperature. So let's talk about our untapped chickens. Were you active oh. on untapped? This past this past weekend at all, or were you just did you just get too crazy? You forgot to check stuff in. Uh, you know, uh, I I got in there a little bit. I did get in there a little bit, and got some untapped stuff in, um, and not the stuff uh, you know, not the stuff that I would normally drink. Um, I did go out. Uh, <laughs> uh, we went out shooting. So uh, you know, if you're gonna if shoot, you're gonna, like shooting, shooting, yeah, shooting guns. Oh, cool. Yeah, so that's pretty go much to a range or just someone's uh, field. Yeah, yeah, oh. personal private range. Nice. Um, you've got to have a uh, uh, shooting beverage, and that consists of one. And, yeah, and, you don't want to mess with that. And that's in uh, my shooting beverage was a I had a uh, Modelo, um, in a can. So I, I checked in with that, um, and then obviously, like I said, I was at uh, Opa. Uh, tavern and uh, grill and tavern and uh, I checked in the uh, the Bourbon County brand stout and uh, I also same place checked in uh, the uh, uh, midnight orange stout Bourbon County brand style uh, once again and that was uh, as well at Opa grill and tavern where those bottles are still sitting there I'm going back to get another one uh, on my way back home Uh oh yeah better get out there beer nation get them before before wood yeah. He's gonna get them all. I, I'm telling you, uh, if if you can, if you're having a hard time finding a variance, uh, get on board with this orange one, and it's right there. Just go in and ask to uh, speak with Ginty. He'll take good care of you. Um, I, the, my my all time favorite that I've had uh, was the the Bourbon County brand vanilla stout. Now that I've heard good things about that, that, that is one. Prob- man, that is an unbelievable. Just through it just. Oh, I hate saying it's the best thing I've ever had, but man, it really ranks up there as one of the best. Best thing I've you've ever had until we go to Four Elf next yeah, week. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. You just can't say that. You can't say that. Um, and then uh, I've the Blonde Ale, uh, the Alum Creek Beach Blonde Ale over at uh, Olentangy River Brewing Company. Those are some of my recent ones that uh, that I have checked in. I mean, I checked in probably <laughs> so bad. Shows how bad of a you have it. What, you uh, have a you have a drinking problem. What's your what's your problem? It's a it's a neat hobby. Um, <laughs> I checked in like fifteen beers, different beers. I think over the past weekend, long weekend. So I'm just gonna pick my favorites uh, that I have checked in, and that's um, my uh. You can look me up at Squiz on Untapped. Um, I think the weirdest one I had was Slide Rule from Urban Artifact. Are you familiar with that one at all? It's their tart raspberry gosa, chocolate raspberry gosa. So it's a straight dessert beer. Uh, it tastes, it was really weird, like sour raspberries, but the chocolate wasn't sour. That was probably the weirdest one. Uh, my favorite one was probably the Saturday Transfer from Masthead Brewing. That was a New England IPA. It was really, really fruity, looked like orange juice in the glass. I had that at Small City Tap House. And then, um, the most, the most, the pleasant surprise one was I walked into the Huron Market, and I bought a uh, Neapolitan milk stout from Sagatuck Brewing Company, which is a seasonal release, which is fine and fine and well, but it was from last October, so it was a stout that was aged for a year, and I bought it mm. off the shelf, and uh, that was that was an interesting find. I just bought it simply because it was an aged an aged stout, and it actually it held up really really well. Uh, for being only 6%. So I still got one of those at home. And then um, just strictly for, I guess you would say, je ne sais quoi or ambiance or whatever, uh, I checked in a fathead headhunter at Bar North Bistro in Huron because we were celebrating the Buckeyes win with my brothers and sisters-in-law and parents. So, yeah, other than that, I mean, like I had a, hand, there's a bunch of other ones I checked in. I had the Black Sheep from Seventh Son last night at the movies, which is a uh, smoked porter, and it really was, it really did taste smoky. It went very well with the movie that I saw, which was um, the new Harry Potter movie, because I'm a nerd. All right, ding, ding, <laughs> ding, ding, and the answer is correct. <laughs> we have a nerd in the building. It's true, I play d and I like Harry Potter, I mean, you know. It's it's fine. It's fine. But yeah, go see that one as well. So All right, there it is. And there's your C- Cisco and Ebert movie rundown as well. Yeah, um, there you go. Yeah, I uh 
All right. Well, if you want to talk about a movie, I watched the movie Iceman uh, with with Vic the Plumber uh, a few Ice weeks ago. A few weeks ago, yeah. What's Iceman? Uh, it's about, uh, from what I understand, it's a, a Polish mobster, I think. Okay. Yeah. You know, Victor Plummer being Polish, you know, we sat there and watched the Polish mobster, uh, video, uh, shout out to, uh, uh, Gary Robinson out there. G Rob. That's right. G Rob. What'd you drink this weekend? Yep. What'd you drink? Hey, make sure everybody drop a drop down the bubble below where you're at, uh, what you're drinking and how's it taste. All right. Give us a like and share, spread it around the world. All right. As we're just getting started, we have a full, full month of guests coming in. We're really, really excited. We love the raucous show when it's just us, but man, we really, really love it when we have our people in the industry in here telling their stories and letting everybody learn a little bit from them. So, uh, yeah. Oh, that's on me. Sorry, I don't. I can't. Man, where's I don't know the how to... professionalism? I know, Man. I know. Yeah. Hey, it's your yeah. Book? Where's your professionalism? Yeah, that's two words. Professionalism. Yeah. Normally, it's my freaking volume. That's a. Uh... Oh, G Rob's calling me a nerd. Okay. Yeah. All right. I see now. I see yeah. how it is, G Rob. Yeah. No. Uh, so uh, I'll tell you what. We're uh, we're almost thirty past the hour. All right. But uh, what I want everybody to do is uh, go ahead. Drop down in those comments below where you're at, what you're drinking, favorite beer that you've had this past week. Like and share us, all right? What's the fav what's, your, what's been your favorite beer that you have had uh, during the, uh, the holiday weekend? But most importantly, listen up, all you monger maniacs out there and uh, everything beer nation, beer nation bandits, you've got to follow us. Everybody, get over on the Everything Beer Nation Facebook page right now. Jump on that page right now. All right, that's where we're going to be able to keep track of your comments and, and bounce back and forth and uh, keep you informed of what you want to know and uh, where the where all the Bourbon County is up here in the Central Ohio, where it's at, and if it's sold out, where you can find it online even because I know that uh, I seen an orange variance box, empty box, for fifteen dollars online. That's right. An empty box of this. 15 bucks online. So make sure everybody gets so over. So do you put water in it and swish it around and get the facsimile of it? Or I, how's that I work? don't know. I don't know. You know, so, but uh, uh, it, it, that's how hot the beer is and uh, it, when the box sells with nothing in it. You know, I, I, I don't get it. So make sure, listen up. Everybody goes over to the Everything Beer Nation uh, Facebook page. That way we're more in tune with you and we're able to, to keep uh, going back and forth with each other. All right. Um, you know, it's a little late. We should have done this last week, but you asked what uh, what uh, your favorite thing you drank over the weekend was. What's your favorite Thanksgiving side? I like deviled eggs, man. Oh, I have like 17 of them, I think, over the weekend. <laughs> I think yeah. that's an appetizer. Yeah. No. No, it yeah. could be a full-blown course meal. Uh, psh, yeah. Go to the back stretch in uh, Delaware, Ohio, the short north of the north. You can get some of the best deviled eggs up there. They do have really, really good deviled eggs. It's like stretch. six deviled eggs, uh, yeah. six big old fat deviled eggs. Creamy. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. A little bit of bacon in them, too. Simpson likes scalloped oysters. Never had it, Simpson, uh, but I love oysters. Yeah, ew, I'm a... That's nasty, Simpson. I'm a... You're uh, nasty, nasty freaking thing. Mass, uh, mashed potatoes with gravy is probably my all-time favorite, and then the stuffing right from the bird. You got to have the stuffing from the bird, not the side stuffing. The What's stuffing going on? The Kyle is now in the house. He's on the board watching right now. What's going on, the Kyle? We were just talking about you a little bit earlier about your show, December 6th, coming at noon. That's right, December 6th, a Thursday at noon. All right, I can't wait to uh, watch that first show. I'll be honest, I might come to the studio and hang out and drink a couple beers while you guys uh, get down. It's going to be really exciting. Um, so, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, Stallbait's out here. Stallbait out here. Always looking for the big beers and the big buys. Uh, what's going on, Jason? Hope everything's good out there. And thank you for allowing us to share on your guys' group as well. A uh, lot of fun. A lot of fun. Uh, G-Rob had a nut brown at 101 from Restoration. So that's a Restoration nut brown. That's that's quality liquid right there, G-Rob. And then he had a Great Lakes Christmas Ale at Condado. So good looking out there. Great Lakes, I think Great Lakes is arguably like pioneer of mass-produced Christmas sales in this area. Uh, I remember when Christmas sale 
first came out, it was totally all the rage. And uh, they would sell out routinely. And now it's funny to think you walk in somewhere and you see just piles of it everywhere. So uh, I also found this weekend some four-string hilltop lager. Oh, yes. I saw yeah. that picture. Still, still out there. Still out there. Still out there. So, you know, if you get on it and you're, you're really paying attention, you can really, you can find, you still, it's still out there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, who's professional now, baby? Oh, yeah. There we go. There we go. I know. No, uh, I'm just over here watching comments going back and forth. You know, uh, uh, yeah. He, he's shouting out. Uh, oh, so it was restoration up at the 101. I see. I see. Yeah, yeah, nice, yeah. He's at nice. 101 Beer Kitchen. And he had a restoration. Yeah, that that is actually a fantastic uh, nut brown as well. Uh, I know it was up uh, up um, up at Barley Hopsters. Uh, shout out to Stephen Caswell and all you crazy rhinos up there at uh, in Marysville Rhino Rugby Rugby Club. I love you guys. You guys are cool as hell. It, it was fun uh, hanging out with you guys. Uh, where are you at? What are you drinking and how's it taste? Come on now, drop it in the bubbles below. Don't be shy. Don't be bashful. Give us a like and share us around the world, all right? And make sure that you're over there on the Everything Beer Nation Facebook page because that is our primary page that we're following right now so we can keep coming back at you. Young custodian in the house. Uh-oh, checking it in, check it in. The young, young custodian. custodian. Better watch out. Chest slaps are premium right now that he's in oh, the house. J- j- Joe. Joe Wilson, I should tell you about this because uh, this is big. Yeah. So Joe Wilson, our buddy Joe from Homestead, if you watch the show, you know Joe big. comes on a lot. We call him Big Head Red from Homestead. Oh. And uh, Joe is doing the Movember Save It or Shave It benefit for uh, Nationwide Children's. And if you go online, I'll share a link from our page. And if you go, but if you just look for Joe, you can donate <laughs> to the cause. All proceeds go to the Children's Hospital. And you can decide whether you want to give your money to the save it sh- side or the shave it side. And then this Thursday night, two nights from now, at Fido, they have a big event from every for everybody, and they bring in a barbershop. I can't remember which barbershop does it, but if you if you if your donors chose for you to shave your beard, you get your beard saved shaved. If they chose for you to save it, you just go and drink the special beer that was brewed for the event. So. Last year, I went and hung out with Joe at Fido for the event, and it was it was a really good time. Um, and I I will probably go again this year because I had a lot of fun. It's pretty much the only time I ever go to Fido, so yeah. So go check it out. I will share a link um, from from our page, and uh, you should donate. It's a good cause. I know I'm going to. So. Uh, I, I'm going to donate for you to save it. By the way, Joe, because it, it's majestic. It is really majestic this year. It, it, he he saved it last year. And said he was going to save it again for this year in case. To say, you know, and to say Joe does one thing every year is, yeah, it's not even it's not even giving him the shout out he deserves. I think I know he doesn't do it for that, but he's constantly doing something to help others all year round. He's always got the the wheels are always rolling. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Every time I talk to him, it's hey, you know what I'm doing? You know, hey, we're doing this benefit or we're doing this. Whether he's working know? to get crossing guards put in in, in oh, Johnstown man. so the kids can cross safely. I'll volunteer for that. He's job. always he's always out there doing something to try to improve the community. Um, so mad, mad, mad props to Joe um, out there. So uh, I think it's about time, right? It's about time for beer news. I think it is. It is about time for beer news. Make sure, hey, we're we're all linked in and we're staying on everything Beer Nation, the Facebook page. That's where we're going to be locked in together, going back and forth. I see a bunch of people jumping yeah. on right now. Stay with us, Dom, Dom Thompson. Yeah, he is. Um, I grew up next door to Dom in Huron, Ohio, and we got Chucky Browder watching from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. What's hey, up? hey, hey, what's up, Browder? Wow, Hoorah, boot camp. All right, stay safe out there, Browder. And uh, we've got T-Dubs on here as well. How about he might be out on the road driving. Who knows? Beer Nation? Or Beer News? Not Beer Nation. Yeah. That's our show. Yeah. <laughs> Here's Beer News. Yeah. How many barrel aids? Good afternoon, this is Squiz with your beer news for November 27th, 2018. Two cousins who have invented a cooler of sorts, one that keeps an individual beer cold, have seen great monetary success with their invention and scored an investment from Mark Cuban and Lori Greiner on the popular television reality show Shark Tank. Cousins Matt Campbell, nice last name Matt, I dig it, and Adam Callanan came up with the idea and 
for, for the bottle keeper while drinking beer in, on a beach on a hot day. They envisioned a product similar to those popular stainless steel water bottles that keep water cold for hours. Their resulting invention is shaped like a glass beer bottle, insulated with neoprene, and padded. It not only keeps the beer cold, but protects it from breaking if dropped. You see it right over there. Uh, <laughs> the two handed out samples to the judges with beer in them and sh- said their spiel. The episode taped in June, and the cousins stated that in the 10 days prior to the taping, they had sold $1 million in product, $2 million in product over the previous month, and $20 million in product over the previous years. Previous three years. Previously only an online company, they are looking to expand to retail and stated that they had 3,000 retailers on wait lists to sell the coolers. They had been spending a lot of money on marketing and shutting down knockoff product. They do have patents on their design. In the end, they scored a $1 million investment deal from Cuban and Griner for a 5% stake in the company and a $1.50 royalty on each unit sold until $2 million is paid off. Not too shabby for two cousins who just wanted some cold beach beers. And now moving on, Mastodon, an American heavy metal band from Atlanta, rock on! They're they're awesome. I've seen them live a couple times. Uh, Are known for being beer nerds in the metal music community. Last week, they announced their third collaboration with Denmark's McKellar Brewing, a Czech pilsner called Ancient Kingdom. It's named after a track on their record, Emperor of Sand. They have previously collaborated with McKellar and released Mastodon Mother Puncher, a farmhouse IPA with passion fruit, and Sultan's Curse, a blackened imperial stout that came in at 12% ABV. The beer is currently available in Europe and on the company's website. The band will get a chance to try some of the beer on their European tour, which kicks off on January 14th in Belfast. Now, last week on Beer News, you'll remember, I touched on Sierra Nevada's Resilience IPA, which is being brewed to benefit victims of the California wildfires. Sierra Nevada has put that beer into production today, and it will release it on draft and in cans. And since last week, a list of Ohio breweries that will be participating is making the rounds. And this is information that I obviously didn't have last week. Since everything Beer Nation is Central Ohio-based, uh, we will have no shortage of Central Ohio versions to try. Among them are BrewDog, Columbus Brewing Company, Endeavor, Hoofhearted, Land Grant, North High, Three Tigers, and Wolf's Ridge. You can bet we here at Beer Nation will be trying as many as possible so we can compare and contrast. Possible collaboration testing episode, anyone? And finally, I'm a Cleveland Browns fan, and you will be... You can, you can bet I enjoyed the hell out of that routing of the Cincinnati Bengals on Sunday. Many interesting things came out of the game. In addition to the absolute beatdown, Andy Dalton's injury, Baker Mayfield, and the rest of the Browns throwing major shade at former coach Hugh Jackson, we were also introduced to an interesting price of beer. As seen in a tweet by ESPN reporter Darren Rovell, beer was retailing at a cheaper price than water. Now, but really, who in their right mind would pay an additional 25 cents for Bud Light? Am I right? Now, now, in all seriousness, we don't know how many ounces each container of liquid was. It was very plausible that the beer was 12 ounces and the water was 20, thus making the beer more expensive per ounce. But after watching that game on Sunday, Bengals fans need all the beer they can get. At least we can cut them a deal on it. That's been your beer news for November 27th. I'm Squiz. All right. All Woo! right. Wow. Another... Blown away, freaking beer news by Squiz. Wow. Man, feel bad for those Bengals fans. Yeah. Rough for them, man. Nicely played. Nicely played. You know, you know, you know why you know you know why the applause is, right? You didn't cry. I almost (laughs) cried watching that game yesterday. I cried with happiness. It was a thing of beauty. Oh my gosh. They didn't punt till the second half. It's red. I know. I know. Pretty <laughs> fancy, eh? Now, uh, it's nice to have a winning team. I, I just don't I don't know what that feels like. It's weird. You must be a Cleveland Browns fan. That's then. what I'm <laughs> saying. Like It's been yeah. since, like, 1988, yeah. you know, it's that, that we've had a decent team where I can watch and be like, oh, we actually have a feasible chance to win this. And if you look at the schedule, I mean, there's – Five games left. We have a, we have a fighting chance in at least three of those games. I I'll tell you what. I I think I think Baker Mayfield's the real deal. I think uh, I think when you're a you're a kid that has to walk on at Oklahoma, and then you win the Heisman Trophy, and then uh, you're on, and then you get drafted number one overall uh, in the NFL, and people still kind of shit on you. I I feel the 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 little chip on his shoulder that that he may have. 
But still, he's going to have to learn real quick to shut the hell up in the league, dude. Respect your elders. Go out there and do your job. You haven't been in the league long enough to bump your gums like that because all you're doing is pissing off a lot of veteran linebackers, DNs, I will, that are ready to shut you up for him. I will, I will agree with you there with the whole just – there's no need to clap back at somebody on Twitter or Instagram if you're Baker Mayfield. You know, just go out there and play the game. But, man, just just keep going, Baker. I, I still say he probably would have benefited from sitting the whole year. But, I mean, what I've seen so far, I told this to a bunch of people when I complained about him getting picked first overall by the Browns. Jeff Wolf. Wolfman, to to say the least. He was the one that gave me the most grief about it. But I said this before, and I'll say it again. I will gladly eat crow on that. In fact, I hope I do. And that's what I said at the time. I was pissed off at the pick. But they said, well, what if he's good? I said, I hope he's good. I don't want him to fail. I want to see him succeed. So, Baker, keep doing well. Make me eat crow. Please be good. I, I beg of you. Hey, but shut the hell up, man. Go to the locker room. Be a leader. Don't sit there and bump your gums because you got your butt hurt because of, of a former coach. Let's be honest. Shut up. Be a professional about it, all right? It, you know, if you want to be in the league that long, then, you know, you're, you're going to have to learn how to be in the league, you know? And uh, he should probably take after some of the, 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 the old school vets uh, that are still in at his position, you know? Um, but, yeah, I'm not here to talk football. But, hey, Baker Mayfield, I dig what he's doing, and I hope he keeps doing well. And, uh, and yeah. I'm first place in one league of fantasy football and second place in my other league in fantasy football. What league are you first place in? The Barley Hopsters League. Never heard of it. Yeah, the league you're in last place in. Yeah, that's right. That's right. All right, enough shit talk here. Now, uh, we uh, – Nobody wants to see us talk shit. Yeah, I could say – I mean, I, 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 I'm not going to – I won't hold anything back about professional athletes and sports and stuff like that. You know, uh, <clears throat> the pros. That's well, I pros. think we have a very special edition of Speedy Beer of the Week. This we week, do. If I'm not we mistaken. do. It's it's actually very very huge. It's also a no brainer. Everybody knows this. It was the Black Friday beer. It's always the Black Friday beer, uh, and that is going to be the uh, Bourbon County brand stout uh, by by Goose Island Brewing Company. Um, you know, they uh, uh, they do a fantastic job. Um, and to be able to get your hands on these is next to impossible. So uh, let me know out there where you're getting yours at, where you got yours at, and if you saw any or if you see any out uh, out there left. All right, because I know that there is, uh, I I know that there are some out there. You just got to get out there and look around. And uh, one of them being uh, where we got our orange variants uh, today from our good friend uh, Genty at Opa Grill and Tavern. And I've got a little something special to go ahead and pop before uh, before we get into talk a little bit about the uh, uh, Barley Hopsters Bottle Shop Speedy Beer that's moving, all right? Because this this doesn't come in, uh, it's just not regular. Give me a shout out to my air winger kinger out there, baby. What What's do you Casey? say? What do you say? And, uh, you know, uh, first of all, uh, this is a very intricate beer. Uh, I guess if you're a retailer, you get basically one chance to screw up and sell it before uh, Black Friday. And uh, then you get no more. No, no more. No more for you. Done. All right. Uh, and that's good. You sell bourbon counter early. Jail. Yeah. Jail. And that's fine. Keep doing it because that's more for people like us up there at the short north of the north in Delaware, Ohio. Like I said, um, I uh, didn't think uh, I, I, I didn't think for a fact that anybody in, up in that area was going to be able to grab some and still hold on to some. Uh, because uh, uh, Ginty really didn't publicize it a whole lot, but uh, it's a go right now if you want to go ahead and get yourself some of that uh, Bourbon County right now. And he has the orange variants there right now. Um, you just go there and you can go and pick yourself up a kick-ass gyro as well. Do we, get, do we got a gyro? Yeah. That's an interesting pronunciation. Oh, huh? here we go again. What do we got? Gyro, gyro, gyro. Huh. How the hell do you say it? I call it a gyro. It's gyro. Euro. Genty, are you still watching? Dude, Genty calls it a gyro. Genty calls it a gyro. K Casey, Euro, gyro, gyro. He Can don't you care as long us? as it gets in his belly. He's a fat body just like I was in boot camp. All right, but what... <laughs> Here we go again. It's every time we start right, drinking guys. these, right. these barrels. Put it on the pole. 
Gyro, Hero, Gyro, anybody wants to weigh in it's on this It's all spelled the same spelling. anyways, right? There's a thing called phonetic spelling in which you spell it out. So if I was going to try to tell you how to say it over <laughs> text, I would spell it H-E-R-O because I pronounce it like Hero. All right, all right. We've got another Leatherneck. Loman's in the house. Yeah, what do you say, is. Jim? See, see, Casey Jim don't, knows. Jim Casey's... don't give a shit how it's spelled as long as you can farm it. All Casey right? says Euro, and he is absolutely right. He also understands phonetic spelling. Thank you, Casey. Dude. <laughs> he also says you're a fat body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a fat body first. He was in before me. All right, so our barley hops are bottle spells. Bottle Shop Speedy Beer that's moving is the Bourbon County brand stout. All right. We have many variances of this. All right. The variances that uh, uh, that uh, we have is the, uh, well, we have the reserve bourbon. All right. The same as the regular recipe, but aged in 12-year-old Elijah Craig barrel proof. There you go, Ginty. That's the one you need to get. Um, the bourbon was awarded a 2017 Whiskey of the Year by Whiskey Advocate. The top honor in the world of international whiskey. The reserve is intended to showcase the nuances of premium single source and highly sought after bourbon. You were impressed that I read that word, weren't you? I, I was I know impressed she that wanted you read to say all some. of those words. Oh! Donna, what's going on? Nice to see you. Unfortunately, you missed the small city segment, but that's, that's okay. I'm sure we'll have plenty of more times at small city to discuss small city. And then we have the proprietor's Bourbon County brand stout. Uh, the proprietor's explores the broad spectrum of chocolate using a combination of dark chocolate and two types of cocoa nibs. This rich and decadent beer highlights the whole range of chocolate from smooth and silky milk chocolate flavors to deep and earthy dark chocolate. I did not have that, and that I want that. That one's only available, was only available in Chicago, and I guess they had thousands in line in Chicago. I want that. Whoa, Donna snowed in Sandusky. So I got out of town just in time then, Donna. It snowed a, like a little bit down here. Like a little bit that would make Sandusky people just laugh. And I laughed. Well, I hope you have some beer, Donna. And then we have the, the now this is the, uh, the, the Bourbon County brand uh, wheat wine. Uh, made from two-row and malted wheat, Bourbon County brand wheat wine is making its debut this year. Uh, as the first recipe to veer from the original Imperial Stout since barley wine in 2013. All right, now uh, the wee wine is full of high caramel, vanilla, butterscotch, and toffee flavors. Um, and then, then comes my favorite one that I've had now. Obviously, I've, I've only had three, all right? Um, uh, I'm still a newbie boot at this, and uh, I've only had three. And um, what's going on, Chiquetti? Keep, uh, keep your eyes peeled over here. We've got something ghostly going on. The, uh, the longtime favorite... Uh, is making a long-awaited return, and that is the Bourbon County brand vanilla stout. This could possibly be an orgasm in a bottle. This Whoa. is unbelievable. It's going to take something. It, you know what? I, I'm going to be in the four elf in the next couple weeks, so I know it's about to go down, and I know I'm going to find something Ooh, up there. That, that four elf is going to be amazing. But this right now, this this right here right now is, is you know. The vanilla delivers on all the quintessential things fans love about this variant. The aromic vanilla, the marshmallow, the toffee oak, and floral notes highlighting the creamy mouthfeel and enhancing the chocolate flavors. Did you just say that creamy mouthfeel? Creamy mouth. Creamy feel. mouthfeel. You heard Man, it right here. I hope here. Joey McGee is not watching right oh, now. Oh, Joey's storing that one up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, you know... <sighs> This one right here, the uh, the Bourbon County Bramble Rye Stout. All right, this is the variant that they aged Bourbon County Stout in rye whiskey barrels, and then added raspberry and blackberry juice and puree from Michigan and Washington. The result is complex, jammy fruit notes that are prominent but well integrated with the caramel and chocolate flavors of beer and spicy rye character from the bottles barrels. This is the one that uh, Master Chief Monger. Is that with, the which one? Barley wine? Yeah. This yeah, is the, I want to try that one. No, the Bramble Rye Stout. Oh, Bramble, the Bramble Rye. That is the one that he uh, he, he he really, really was uh, wanting that. Can you believe that they sold out before you could buy any of the beer that he bought? Crazy. That's, That's how fast it's this on stuff him, went. Man. Yeah. And then he's got the uh, the barley wine, uh, the Bourbon That's County the brand barbecue barley, I barley really wine. That's the one I really want to try. That's the one that I, I am really into. 
You know, that's uh, working with uh, their friends at, oh, man, I don't know if I can read that one. Intelligence Asia, we flew down to Guatemala to source some of the world's best coffee to use as they released the first ever coffee barley wine. The beer is an English style barley wine, meaning malt forward and aged in four plus year old Heaven Hill bourbon barrels before adding coffee beans right before packaging to retain a bold coffee aroma and flavor. You know, that, that sounds crazy as well, too. That sounds. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. Wow. Barley wine. I, bet you, I bet you that is a big, big beer. It it's got to be big of out that of all of them. Barley wine. Uh, breakfast barley wine that we have at B-Hops. The barley wine with coffee. It sounds awesome. So. Hey, Donna Vlad from Royal Docks. I agree. That is a fantastic beer. She's, That's she's great choice. S- snowed in up there in, in Bell Tucky, so Bellevue. So yep, they'll yeah, they'll have all the Royal Docks you need up there in that in that neck of the woods, up there in Ohio, uh, up there in Ohio. And then the one that we drank earlier is the uh, uh, the, the Bourbon County brand Midnight Orange Stout. All right, this is uh, Brewer Oscar and quality analyst Paul created the concept for this new variant. Uh, the result was Midnight Orange. They combined two things they love, orange and chocolate, taking Bourbon County into a new and exciting direction. While, th- while the chocolate complements the Bourbon County base, the orange zest offers a point of contrast for a bold new flavor profile to delight Bourbon County fans and newcomers alike. So, bam, there it is. There it is. Those, those are all your variants well, out there. Well, you know what's not on that list. That's right. What we're about to drink That's right now. Right. And we got a little something right here. Um, we're going to go ahead and look at this nicely. Yeah, nice it looks, here. from what you guys can see, get it real close there. I don't know. Oh, look at that. Look at the date on that bad boy. Oh, that's that's right. a 2017. That is a 2017. And uh, that right there, ladies and gentlemen, Monger Maniacs, everything Beer Nation badasseries. That is your speedy beer. That's moving right there. Now, uh, I want to go ahead and add that uh, this being the second weekend. Oh, that's that, good. Uh, this is the second weekend that we uh, uh, have, well, the second week that we've been into the barrel aged a little bit. Uh, normally, we don't drink this much barrel aged. Uh, we're not stopping anytime soon. It's barrel aged season, baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, obviously, Squiz has no brake pedal at all. She's she's just proven that right there. And then now, uh, G G just walked back in the room. Now, uh, producer G, uh, like I said, I've told everybody on the show before. He only drinks uh, and does tasters when we come in. He's way too busy for the shenanigans of full time uh, beer mongers. Right here. So he takes it. Uh, he takes it uh, one sip at a time on everything Beer Nation. Uh, and uh, the thing that I really get out of this is every week coming in and watching he loves, how he likes. He loves barrel age. Yeah, he is not. Uh, he, just, he, he doesn't we, come off as a beer drinker no. at first with five, six weeks ago, you know, but now um, not only is he into tasting or hey guys what do you guys got tasting today you know he is a huge fan of barrel age barrel age beer barrel age beer and uh he was blown away about the uh the orange variation at 27.50 a bottle um and uh if you're a brewery out there g would buy your barrel age beer all year yeah you know, not just in barrel age season. Hey, there, all hey, there, year, there, you never know. There, there could be a sponsorship, uh, some sponsorship stuff going on there too. You don't know because uh, um, this 2017, there was one case up at Barley Hopsters. I want to give a shout out to to Brian Harpster up at Barley Hopsters. Not only did you bring in the 2017 and the 2018, but you were able to get uh, all but uh, one variant. Uh, uh, of of uh, the Bourbon County branched out. Did so, he not get the Chicago one? Because nobody in Ohio got the Chicago one. Um, you know, there was uh, – it, it was such on uh, – it was like uh, Fort Knox when it was in the building. Uh, it was behind uh, two sets of uh, curtains. And, it definitely uh, wasn't behind your mom's pants because anybody can get in there. Oh! oh! oh wow! <laughs> Jesus! Man! Mom, do you hear that shit? Get set it wow, up. I'm going to hit yeah, it out. Dude, oh my <laughs> God, dude. Man. One, I, can't, I can't resist bur- a good your mom joke. <laughs> yeah, mom jokes just come out of everywhere when they're drinking bourbon barrel-aged beer. You know what I'm saying? 
But uh, so no, uh, it, it's good. It's good that we're we're able to uh, come into the studio and affect some of the people around us with uh, some of this great. Uh, uh, great stuff that yeah. uh, that we're pouring. It's it's barrel age season, so oh, we got somebody watching from Norway, Marie. What's, What's going shaking? on, Norway? International, International monger maniac monger on nation. everything beer nation. Love wow. it. Gotta love that. Gotta love that. Oh wow, from Norway. What's going on? What are you drinking right now, in Norway, Marie? And how's it taste? All right, now. Uh, like I said, uh, we, we, we've got a little treat, more treats. Yeah, All we right. got eight I mean, minutes. honestly, you can't taste this 2017 treat. It's not taste division. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh. But, wow. uh. That is fantastic. Yeah, and as you can tell. Uh, Donna liked my mom joke. Thanks, Donna. Damn. So we, I, I mentioned in the in the the share for this that we were we were infusing things, and uh, we have limited time to do that. So maybe we should just do that. Let's do it. Hey, uh, we, we 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 created a new segment. Mm -hmm. uh, we love to, you know, believe it or not, me and Squiz kick around ideas all the time, um, and uh, you know, we kicked around this idea that uh, we have a new segment, and it's uh, called Just In. Fuse it. That's right. That's when we take a little something and we make it a little something else by taking a fantastic great beer and then throwing a little something. Who knows what we're going to throw in there from week to week or from time to time. It may not be an every week deal, but it's definitely going to be here quite often. So, ladies and gentlemen, monger maniacs out there and everything beer nation, sit back and enjoy. Just fuse it. Well, what we got here is we've got some blackberries and we've got some Mystic Mamba IPA by Jackie O's Brewing Company out of Athens, Ohio. Fantastic IPA, Mystic Mama. And uh looks like we have Squiz getting ready to I imagine So oh, muddle I'm muddling now. Muddling. So if you guys remember if you watched last time I, I did the, the Oreo infusion, I, I processed the Oreos. Which was well and good for Oreos in a French press, cause kind of like coffee grounds. But I figured if you did the the blackberries too fine, you would get juice, just straight juice, and I didn't really, I didn't really want that. So instead, I took a spoon and just kind of mashed them up to release the juices. And uh, it, we had a we had a red solo cup hanging around, as one always does. Can't go wrong with a good can't go wrong with a good red solo cup. So then I took the uh, I took the mash and I dump it into my uh, French press, which I don't use very often for coffee, unfortunately. But it really worked well with the Oreo, so I figured we should just make a new segment, just infuse it. So then I did a little bit of uh, mushing around in there, get the rest of that pulp out into the infuser. Oh yeah. And then oh, yeah. if anybody knows how to use a French press, you you would just pour whatever you're infusing on top of it. And you filter it out later. So I got I got a lot of foam from this. It was really kind of hard to not keep it from foaming because of the fruit the fruit reaction with with the alcohol. Uh, but you can see there already up in the up in the foam there you're getting you're getting some of that color from the blackberry already to uh, take it on in that foam. And then I did a second can. Now typically when you do an infusion like this, you throw it in the fridge for I like to do an hour, and then you should top it off with a fresh beer because it'll lose its carbonation. So I did, I did two beers. I looked up some vague recipes online. I did about four ounces eyeballed of berries to about, all told, 12 ounces. Um, and then we just wait an hour. I throw it in that little mini fridge behind me. And uh, you end up with what we've got here. So it came out. It looks like this. I haven't pressed it yet. But I'm going to press it. You can't really see it here, unfortunately. But D Donna, you're absolutely right. Uh, Jackie does do a fantastic job on their can art. So when you're pressing an infused beer, you want to do it really slow. Slow, yeah. Really slow. Because if you do it fast, you're going to get a lot of foam. And I don't, I don't want a lot of foam. Uh, nobody wants foam. It's, it's, I can see it's still pretty carbonated because it is inherently a carbonated beer. You know, this IPA is a little bit it's, it's, oh, it's yeah. pretty carbonated. It looks pretty good. It hasn't really changed too much color. Uh, so now we're going to pour it out. Oh, this is going to be fancy. Biscuit. So here we go. 
So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pour it in. I'm going to pour about half a glass, and then I'm going to top it off with some fresh Giacchio's to just kind of get a little carbonation kick uh, into the back into the beer. So that's not really a fresh one. That's my open one. But, you know, do you do you, bud. I'm not going to stop you. <laughs> you it works. Waste it you it waste works. It? No, I was going to drink it. Cool. There we go. So crack that other Jackie O's. We'll see how well this worked. Yeah, just give me a little topper there. Cool. There we go. G. Give it now, a shot. Now, G, uh, this isn't barely this isn't barrel beer, aged. all right? So. All right, and I can't even guarantee it's going to be good. I don't really know. Again, this is part of the fun of just infuse it, is you just infuse it. We don't know. You're infusing a freaking fantastic beer, yeah. though. Well, let's see. I don't really get much raspberry. If I had to do it again, I'd use more raspberry. I'm getting a little bit on the tail end. I'm getting a little bit on the tail end. I feel. Let me, let me press more of this straight raspberry into this. Here. Oh, there you go. There's your raspberry. There's a raspberry. If if I had to do it again, and that's these are the lessons. That's we're all gonna, right. These are the lessons we're going to learn on just infuse it. Yeah. You know, it's it's just like cooking. You make a recipe and you take notes. You try it doesn't work so if i was going to do that again i would probably use a whole six ounce container of raspberries I'd probably muddle it a little bit more and i would probably leave it a touch longer just because that hot prof profile is so big uh you gotta you know really let it soak in or i would try it with a edmund fitzgerald porter from yeah. great lakes oh yeah because that would probably take really well what's going on bd out there Gearing up for a big journey up north here in a couple weeks. All right, all right. Thanks BD. for watching. BD! 4L special Arr. episode next week, man. Oh, man. You want to stop by? You're more than welcome. You know where the studio is. Heck, yeah. Heck, yeah. Wow, Squiz, uh, that was uh, that was our second rendition of <laughs> Just Infuse It. Um, I, I, I honestly can't wait until the next episode of that. Uh, next, I want to uh, do something really weird with it. Yeah. Really weird, like candy or some shit. Like, really weird. And let it sit maybe a little longer? Yeah. Like yeah. A, or like, or maybe like beef jerky in a nice smoky stout? No. Yeah, we no can way. food process beef jerky. Hey, man, let's Oh, get Donna a, says chocolate stout and marshmallows. Let's put a I think carp that would in be there. Really we'll, we'll squish the carp in there. How's that? Nah, I think beef jerky or bacon. Like, jerky bacon and a nice smoked stout. Ah, it's happening. This guy's going to drink it, I promise. He's going to oh, drink yeah. it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's, there's no doubt. There's no doubt. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, monger maniacs, everybody out there, and everything, beer nation. You know, uh, it, it, it's, it's coming to that time. It's coming to that time. We've went through a lot of stuff today, um, but we've got an action-packed month coming up, and I want to go ahead and plug that real quick because we've got some really, really, really uh, cool things coming in December for. Uh, all you monger maniacs on everything Beer Nation. Tina right. says candy canes is an infusion, which we could do closer to Christmas. Yeah. Candy canes. Interesting. Yeah. The candy canes. I like it. I like it. How about, how about canes? <laughs> I'm going to just infuse it with canes chicken. You know? Uh, we got. Uh, that might be a possibility. We got Dark Horse on the. We got Dark Horse on December fourth. That's going to be in the studio. We've got three Floyds coming here on the eleventh of December. All right. That's going to be a huge show. I can't wait for three Floyds, and Dark Horse. But yeah. It's We've got Olin Tangi. Olin Tangi, our neighbors. Yeah. They're right over there. Yeah. They got a far commute. They just got to walk through the yards. Yeah. Yeah. Just like when I was a kid playing with my friends across the block. Just walk through the yard. And then, uh, then we got Christmas. Then we have Christmas. And uh, I, I'm pretty sure we're going to do a Christmas special to be determined. We'll see what happens, you know. We'll, uh, we'll see. I know one thing. if uh, It's going to be uh, super fun. It'll be fun. If It'll we be super it fun, yeah. 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 We put this on uh, late night after dark on Cinemax maybe. <laughs> that type. <laughs> you know, because uh, we're, we're going to have – we'll bring all that Christmas stuff in and uh, have too much, too much fun. So – but uh, yeah, 
Well, last call, right? Yeah, Is that there where we we're are. At? We're last right call, here. Last, last call. call. Last call for alcohol. Uh, what you got? What do I got? Well, I'll tell you what. I want everybody to have a fantastic week. Be safe. And uh, we're going to be back uh, cranking next Tuesday. Same time, same place. Give us a like. Drop us a share. We'd really appreciate it. Uh, let us know what you want because that's what we're here for. You, the fan, right here on Everything Beer Nation. So, uh, Squiz, what do you got? As always, I'm going to use my last call. Last call. To give shout outs to everybody on social media that supports us. Uh, Pints Templars and Craig Simpson, you guys are amazing. Springfield Beer Geeks with uh, Germ and Steve, thank you for your support. We got Central Ohio Craft Beer, Wayne Millard and, and Beer Label Society, uh, Craft Beer and Body LLC, Cleveland Craft Beer Babes, Jane Doe's Craft Beer Consortium, Beer Drinkers United, Drink Beer Grown Here. Everybody else we share into, thank you so much. We appreciate it. We couldn't do it without your support. And everybody that comments and likes and shares, Thank you. You guys are the best. There it is. There it and is. And of course, our lovely network here. Oh, yeah, that's right. You can't forget it. We can't forget it. The Fan Chat Nation Network. <laughs> and we got, I mean, Producer G busts his ass in here every day. We got live watch parties here for the Buckeyes, the Cowboys. So, Browns. Yeah. All sorts of stuff. All sorts Believe of stuff. Believe it or not, we're not, the, we're not the only thing right here on Fan Chat Nation, you know, uh, on the network, um, you know, but, you know, we definitely love being a part of it. We love being a part of it. So, ladies and gentlemen, Monger Maniacs out here in everything Beer Nation land. This is Spartan Biscuit and Squiz, the Beer Mongers, on everything Beer Nation, on the Fan Chat Nation Network, Columbus, Ohio's live streaming podcast about craft beer, breweries, alternative sports, and, of course, shenanigans worldwide for the brewery by the fans. We will cheers you later.